Hello and welcome to our Flux podcast series. We recognise that starting university is such a massive and important part of life and we want to help equip you for starting university, which is why we've developed a podcast and a book at which you can read and think about the ideas of identity, purpose, belonging and fulfilment and what place they have at your university experience. Welcome back guys to our second podcast on our Flux series looking at how we can equip our fresher students as they enter university. And we we're just chatting a little bit beforehand about some of our big dreams going into university. I suppose we had varying, varying dreams. <laughs> <laughs> That's the right way to say it. Um, but yeah, what, what kind of dreams did you guys have, have going into university? We start with you, Tawani. Yeah, uh, it probably was a bit ambitious, really. <laughs> um, I said in the last episode, I uh, studied sports management and coaching. So I actually, I was staying at home last night and I had like kind of a little goal setting thing on my bedroom wall when I was uh, still in school. And on it, it said to be a League of Ireland manager by this time <laughs> in my life. <laughs> uh, I, I think this is probably the better job. <laughs> Absolutely, but, yeah, I, I, was, I agree. That was very ambitious, I think. <laughs> Definitely could still happen, Twani, you know, 100%. <laughs> <We'll see. laughs> I love that. Such big dreams, you oh, know. Really shooting for Skyler. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Liz? Yeah, Are you similar, like similar dreams? I was a bit smaller. Um, <laughs> I think I didn't really know what I wanted to do at university or beyond university or anything. Um, I studied business with German. I always loved German and languages. So I think really going into university, I was like, well, it's a degree. It has something that I like. I had not a clue about business. So I was just kind of like, well, we'll go learn something new. Um, see what happens. I think my goal was to try and figure out what I wanted to do with my life. I'm still not sure I'm there yet, but <laughs> um, but we got through university. So. <laughs> oh no, I feel that lives. I feel like I'm still like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Still like <laughs> working that through. Um, but of course we're, um, yeah, we love being able to do stuff like this and, and chat a little bit about um, with you guys thinking about what it means to start university. I suppose thinking about these big goals how do we achieve them? Like, I suppose we've got the, the big high goals of yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, managing Ireland, but, and maybe even, again, that resonates as well, trying to just get through it. You know, what, what drove you guys when you're trying to reach these goals at university? I think coming from school, um, like, I, I would probably was someone who I did work quite hard in school. Like, I, I wanted to get good grades, did well. So I think that there was someone that coming into university um, of like, I just want to work hard, do my best. I think because I didn't know what I wanted to do, I was kind of like, right, well, if I work hard, then at least I kind of leave my options open um, if I do well. Um, and it, but I think it's a big shock how the marking works in university as well. So it's like when you, you know, you're used to the, the higher grades and then if you if you get a 60 in university, you're like, happy days. <laughs> but I think it's it's trying to reframe that um, and yeah, not yeah not letting that kind of get you down when you're, um, but I think yeah, it was definitely, the motivation was definitely just to try and get a good degree, get a, and come out the other side with something that I can go and do something with really yeah I think I was probably similar but more in maybe a kind of selfish way in the sense of at least at that point of like oh I'd love to see my name up in lights or whatever I'd love to be kind of in control of this uh kind of big thing this big or organization or whatever it may be and kind of just wanting to kind of make something great of my life I suppose uh or whatever 17 year old me thought uh was grace my life at, the t at that time which is yeah it's kind of in line with that wanting to work hard but it's also like all right you have you don't really know how much it takes I suppose at that point uh you don't really know kind of the day-to-day -day how that works out to kind of get to those points and um I think like that was something I wasn't really prepared for by the time I hit university and you know you go through those first couple of weeks and you're Again, deer stuck in headlights at times, trying to just uh, find your way around a place. But I think, yeah, what kind of motivated me was probably myself, I think, at that time. And just a desire to see, yeah, great things happen that, mm -hmm. you know, I thought I could probably have achieved without God and very quickly realised was not possible. 
And I think it's difficult, you know, you go in and you're like, oh, I'm going to work hard and I'm going to be so motivated. And then for me anyway, like I like structure. Um, so then when I get to university and I say you've got like two hours of class today, I'm like, what do I do with this time? How do I like motivate myself? How do I keep working? Um, and it's just so different. Like you or you end up, we were talking before, you end up just sleeping in or <laughs> um, I, I was quite good at not missing class. I have to say I was like, I need to be a class. But um <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's just funny when you suddenly are left with all this time and you're like, how do I motivate myself? Like what yeah. what purpose do I have with the rest of the day if I'm only in class for two hours? But That's yeah. one of the first big differences that no one's on you, you know, yeah. no one's chasing you up for your homework or whatever. Like you're, yeah, you have two hours of class and then whether you want to go to the library for the next three hours or not, it's up to you. But yeah. yeah, you're suddenly in control of all of my decisions. There's no one like dictating my schedule or timetable in school where you have to be at different classes at different times. Now I can decide like, do I want to go to that class or not today? Or yeah, I'm going to go to the library or am I just going to go home and have a nap? You know? yeah. <laughs> um, and I suppose we're trying to think about purpose today. And we've touched on a few of our goals thinking in university and maybe what drives us, that being our purpose. But we've almost touched there on if at university when things change mm. you know we are in that time of flux and change actually then things are so different and we can maybe lose motivation and we're sort of just going with the flow at university I don't know if you, you guys resonated with that um, at uni just sort of not really mm. feeling like we had much purpose at all yeah I think it's definitely something that you can fall into like um, especially with the day-to-day that you're talking about of like you know what do I do with the rest of my day now that I've finished all my classes or especially in the first few weeks like you're especially if you move out like you do I make dinner now do I how do I wash my clothes what do I do now and you're trying to just figure things out and that might put you into a place of like oh well I'm not really that fussed anymore (laughs) like I don't really know how to do it I don't really know what to do so I don't really want to learn maybe and it's something I think you can find yourself like dropping into at times. I know I definitely dropped into it uh, quite a bit when I realized the pressure wasn't on so much. And you just kind of, yeah, you just lose the will to go out and not do and do things or go out and kind of push, I suppose, push yourself the hardest. Yeah, and I suppose you can go the other way as well. If like you have all this time or you think, oh, if, if you know, if you're not going to class or whatever, you think, what's the point? So you can't just go out every night like you know you can you can start to turn to other things that maybe even before you wouldn't have even thought about you know before coming to university but suddenly there's all these decisions and places that you could go people you could be with um things that you can fill your time with whether that is going out or whatever yeah whatever that can be where your friends are or where people in your class are going um and just trying to find that purpose when you know you don't you're not really responsible for a whole lot um in a lot of the days and I think yeah sometimes then you can you can feel a bit lost in that um and yeah not really sure what to what to do and lose motivation um as well then to to reach those goals that maybe you came into university with and all of these different things how do you think that shapes then our university experience whether you're the real high motivated wanting to get that first you know in in your degree or you're going to university thinking i'm just here for good time you know and this this time in life where I have more time to spend with people how does that shape then those different experiences how does that shape our university life yeah um well being the kind of highly motivated person at times you're probably just constantly striving and you're constantly looking for the next thing and it's hard to be content at times because you're looking for the next step up or the next step up and the next step up and you're constantly looking so far ahead that you maybe don't look at the present and kind of uh well a enjoy the present but then b when those kind of higher steps aren't really coming for you you, again we said lose motivation you lose that kind of sense of purpose because it's not quite coming to you yet um and it can lead to you feeling a bit well lost in a way at times um so yeah being those kind of highly motivated people maybe you're as well also maybe just so laser focused that you miss what's going on around you you miss uh you may be so focused to put your head in your books that you don't get out much to your societies or to kind of the new friend groups that you might be forming uh you're just kind of so laser focused and one-dimensional going one way that you lose out a bit yeah because that becomes everything that motivation and i need to achieve this so what can i sacrifice then to, to yeah. achieve that absolutely 
I think having like the wide open space as well, there's so many decisions of places to go, what you put your time and energy into. It can lead you to, I guess, living out of that place of anxiety of like, what if I don't go to the right place? What if I miss out on that? Or what if I should have gone there? Or what if I should have done that? And you kind of, yeah, you get into that cycle of, of feeling anxious about those decisions and feeling anxious about where you spend your time, what, you, what you're thinking about, what you're doing. Um, and I guess what's really helpful in this Flux article is it's talking about how we have to feed our, ourselves and our souls on, on what is good as well in, in times when things are changing and, and that being important. And you can really see that when you lose sight of that, then you, you do spiral into that just yeah, not really knowing where to go, what to do. And I guess in that we're putting ourselves in a... A higher place than maybe we should we, you know we like you said you you know you were going into it for yourself and we're thinking of ourselves as these people that need to be great or need to need to be the center of everything um when and we lose focus of that identity i guess we were talking about in episode one um and with that our purpose yeah that's so true lives i think that we can be, that could become everything then you know and that is what drives us that's what motivates us that is our purpose and like you said and even we've touched on this can make us feel so anxious or burdened you know and I think these flux studies are so helpful as we we look through the book of Philippians and even seeing what Paul has to say about this mm. and these are maybe verses that we've heard before we touched before um in Philippians 4 where Paul says to rejoice in the Lord always I will say it again rejoice and even about not being anxious about anything. I'll just read it for us again. Do not be anxious about anything, but everything, in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. I think this is really just um, really relevant to what we're talking about with this anxiety and what we might feel and what drives us. I suppose, how do, does what Paul is saying here, how does that um, sort of shape our university experience or yeah firstly maybe let's chat about like what it what is Paul saying here like how, how do we do this how do we rejoice in God how do we not feel anxious about anything yeah well I think like if we if we read this context where it's like rejoice in the Lord always I say again rejoice and then we, we think about where Paul is in that moment and he's in prison and he's saying this to rejoice um, and I guess when, when I was just reading through this it, it says it, you know it helps shape our frame of mind of our purpose actually is to rejoice in the Lord always because if we know if we think back to episode one if we know that we're found in him and that's where our identity lies and we can rejoice in the Lord always and so whether you're, I guess you are that person who's gone in when things have changed and you've tried to control everything within yourself and work hard and get that security for yourself um, we're not going to be very joyful in that, I guess, if we're the, the slaves to that. So it's it's that reminder to come back and remember who God is and remember the joy that is found in him, not the striving that is found in him, but the joy. Um, or whether you're the person that, yeah, is kind of losing that again, like forgetting the joy that is found in Christ um, and how we can go out and, and live our lives to that. Um and I guess just to that, that reminder, you read out verse uh, six there, Lizzie, in, in Philippians four. But just at the end of verse five, it says the Lord is near. Um, and I guess rem- remembering that in those times, if we are in that place of feeling anxious about everything that we do and, and losing sight of that joy, just that reminder that the Lord is near. And Paul experienced this while in prison. Um, and we can experience this each day at university. You know, we we hopefully have more freedom than, than Paul did in those moments. Um, but yet he was able to say the Lord is near. And I think remembering that, remembering that he is near. And so we can bring everything to him. Every situation, it says, um, no matter how big or small, we can bring that to him um, and, and give that over to him. And whether that is the, the tiny decisions of what you spend your time with or whether it's the decision of, you know, how you've got to university or um, what you're going to do after university, we can bring all these requests to God. Um, and yeah, he is near. Oh, which is such a beautiful truth, isn't it? That Just reflecting yeah. on that, mm. that he is near. And that means we can bring our requests before him. I think he continues on there in, in verse seven and even says like, when we do bring those prayers and petitions to him, what does he give us in return? It says here in verse seven, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. I think that helps us when we think about our decisions, doesn't it? That actually when we bring them before God, Mm -hmm. we are given this peace from him that when we're feeling overwhelmed at university and 
thinking about all the, the things we need to do and what can I do to achieve my goal or actually I don't know what to do and I'm just you know, having a good time that actually um, the Lord is near to us. We can come before him and he will give us that peace. Yeah, and I think that's something that I've definitely found. Um, as, like the decisions have always been something that have caused really this, like what you see, that anxiety in, in my life because I think I've never really known what's next um, and seeing people around you who do know what's next and who maybe is doing a course to lead you right into a job where I was always kind of in that place of like, even from when you're fresher, oh, what do you want to do with that course? You know, you're saying, oh, I'm doing international business with German. Oh, cool, what do you want to do with that? No idea. <laughs> and that, that always, that kind of feeling of anxiety was there of like, I actually don't know what I want to do like how do I how do I deal with that and what decisions am I going to make over the next four years will it impact what I'm able to do with that after um, and I was actually really helpful it was a friend at university reminded me of actually asking God for that peace not necessarily that um, you know like we know God has a good plan for our lives and um, we're, we're told that we know that God goes before us and that God is near in those times but it's not that when we we're not told that when we bring it to God he will show us away instantly we're told that when we bring it to God we will get peace and um, the peace of God transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds and so I think it's it's praying for um, it's bringing all this stuff to God, remembering he is near, bringing it to him and asking God for that peace that he promises. And you know, it's a promise. He promises that peace um, and being to live out, to being able to live out of that um, and know God's peace. It's not then that I have to strive and make myself something bigger than I am and think that if I don't do that, I'll somehow mess up God's plan for my life. But it's actually living in the goodness and knowledge of that peace that God gives us when we know that he is near, we know that he guides our steps um, and when we know that we do not need to be anxious about anything. I love what you said there, Lives about living out of that. And I think that can shape so much of our university experience as well. And I want us to maybe think about that. Like how does that impact our, our university experience? You've touched on this, Lives. like if we did live like this, if we rejoiced in, in Jesus and in God and what he's given us. Yeah, I think... It- it would reduce the turbulence of it so much, you know, like for every up, there can very much be a down almost of the, of an equal level. And for the kind of high achievers, it kind of helps them reduce that kind of the devastation of the downs. And even for those who are kind of feeling not so sure about their purpose or kind of where they're meant to be, what they're meant to be doing, uh, maybe even lack of motivation at times, it helps bring that kind of knowledge of peace and calm that you are, that you can still you are still following the Lord's plan by dedicating your life to him, by going back to him, by offering uh, your burdens to him, your thoughts to him in prayer, you know, by petitioning to him and asking him for that peace, he will give that to you. And I think it just leads us to very much a place of contentment in each of, in everything that we do in our college lives, uh, going out and see you or going out to your other societies or going into your work, going into your support, whatever it may be. Uh, going into your work and your weekend job, if that's the case for you as well. Mm-hmm. It just helps you find that calm and peace and knowledge that you are in the place that God's meant for you to be. You are following the path that he has for your life, uh, which is ultimately good, which is ultimately amazing for you and what he wants for you. Yeah. Absolutely, Joanne. I think it's, um, we think about this peace and think about rejoicing in the Lord as well. I think I know this, but this is hard when we're in those moments and hard when we're feeling like this. And even thinking about where Paul's writing this from, he's writing this from prison in Rome. And yeah, I don't know about you guys, but how how do you think we can do this? Like when we're having those moments and we're feeling overwhelmed by the decisions and everything at uni, how can we remind ourselves of this? You know, when we see that peace from God and the nearness of God. Yeah. Well, I guess... Paul helps us out here in this chapter even um, and he tells us to um, think about whatever is right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent and praiseworthy. Think about such things. And I think when you read that it's so different from what we see in the world. Like, you know, we're people 
yeah, you, people would see you and they, they maybe know something that's going on in your life and they'd expect you to maybe be a bit more disheartened or people just, I, I guess things are, people are fighting for what's right and they, they're saying, you know, these things are not good, whatever that might be for each person. They're they're going out fighting for that and they're not content. They're not, they're wanting the next thing. They're wanting to make themselves feel like they've done good in the world. And again, what we're saying, that fixes our eyes on us. But here we read that we're to fix our eyes on what is right and pure and lovely, admirable. Um, and I think in those things it is very much about you know pointing back to Christ and even finding those people I know we talked about about friends even in those first couple of weeks finding a few people not that you have to be only friends with Christians but finding a few people whether that be in your church or CU or friends from home that will point you back to Christ that will fix your eyes on on these things that are good not on the things that the world or the university context is going to throw at you um, but the things that are good and that we know that are true. Um, and I guess, yeah, in doing that, we need to to know Christ and we know Christ by um, reading and, and by bringing things to him. Um, and that's how we, we know his nearness. We're not going to know that if we go off and do our own thing um, and forget about those things that we know are good. Um, so that's coming back to that, I think. 100%. I think this, as we meet so many different people at university, as we um, come in um, contact with people we've never met before, and um, I think then from that that peace that we have from God, from that identity that we are talking about last last time and last, the last episode, um, then people should maybe see something of the goodness of who Jesus is from that. Mm. And how do you think this all impacts our mission then? Well, it's. I think it's exactly as you said. Your, your purpose of being based in God and finding peace in God, that will shine. And I think in, I think what I've seen from kind of the outside world and uh, kind of non-Christian world when I've been kind of be coaching or working or wherever it may be, people notice the kind of level-headedness of your mood or of your uh, work that you're going in some days it may not be so great and you might be smiling because you know your purpose is uh found in christ and your identity is found in christ and that's notable there's a guy who came into icu uh, earlier this year who was a doctor and they everything wasn't going so well uh it was a really hard day and he was still smiling the same way to himself and he was just filled with you know the love of christ and that stood out to the nurses on the ward and they said what, what's the story with you and he was like why should i be so anxious and annoyed like it's grand I have the Lord on my side and I think that's something that really can be displayed to people and we can kind of help give that to other people we can help raise them up in their kind of um, uh, kind of feelings of maybe not knowing quite what they're meant to be doing as well and their purpose we can tell them of Jesus love for them and we can show them of his love for them and I think we can kind of help them even practically however it may be be it supporting them as a friend or uh, having a chat with them or even just taking their minds off of things um, I think that kind of purpose that we have is not just for ourselves it's for the outside world as well uh, as for everyone outside of us as well so we need to give that to them yeah and I think that peace is so countercultural to what we say like we experience it within ourselves but then how much more do people who don't know God and who don't know this peace must experience that time of, of change going into university and not having anything that's certain, I guess. I think that peace that we can display is such a witness to people around us. Um, and being able, like you said, to want to communicate that to people when they ask. Um, and yeah, and I think like it is a, it is an active thing. We see even Paul, he talks about straining towards what is ahead. Like it's an active, it's not that we can sit back, but it's, it is an active thing that we have to do each day. And to, and it, but I think I love even that like higher purpose that Paul talks about here of like, um, God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And even just having that bigger view of, of the world to the bigger view of God's plan and the bigger view of our part in that is such a, a freeing thing as well um, and helps us even to share that with others and um, like we said like we want we want people to know this peace that God gives us and um, we want people to 
also be straining towards this goal to have that higher purpose and calling than just what's right in front of us. I think it gives us so much more of a, a hope and a and a goal for university. You know, like uh, my goal, I would have never have said my goal for university was telling others about Jesus, but like I'm like maybe it should have been. <laughs> so you know that, but it is because you know we have this higher purpose and we have um, people around us who are in need of of this peace and in need of a reason to rejoice, um, and we know that we find that in Christ. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for this. It's been so helpful thinking about actually our our purpose at university and even yeah, not being overwhelmed by all of these decisions that we can make. Thank you for, for joining us and hopefully we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for engaging with our Flux podcast series. We'd love for you to read along with us in our Flux resource, which you can get for free, what a bargain, um, at coi.ie slash link up. Thank <laughs> you.